today dawn service to mark Anzac Day in Honiara. Parents are encouraged to bring their children between the ages of 1 to 5 for regular health checks and immunization. And Solomon Islands representative at Face and Beauty Pageant says just go for it. Hello and welcome, I'm Lisa Osifello. First up, the Governor General, His Excellency Sir David Vunagi, leaves the country on Wednesday this week to attend the coronation of King Charles III in London. The coronation of King Charles III and his wife, Camilla, as King and Queen of the United Kingdom and the other Commonwealth realms is scheduled to take place on Saturday, the 6th of May, 2023, at the Westminster Abbey. The Governor-General Sir David and Lady Mary, together with the Minister of Foreign Affairs and External Trade, are invited to attend the coronation ceremony by Buckingham Palace. His Majesty King Charles III becomes the head of state of Solomon Islands after the passing on of the late Queen Elizabeth II, September last year. Member of Parliament for West New Georgia, Vona Vona, Honorable Silas Tausinga, has pledged $1 million for a new outpatient ward at Helena Goldie Hospital in Western Province. Speaking during his vote of thanks in response to the speech from the throne in Parliament, the opposition MP says the $1 million would be from the Constituency Development Fund to replace the old outpatient building at Helena Goldie Hospital. He says his constituency office team has already met with the Ministry of Health and Medical Services to spearhead the design of the new outpatient facility. I understand that in the MOU on that project is currently being worked on by the Ministry. It would be noble if the Ministry prioritizes and move forward with all the necessary paperwork quickly. Thus, I'm also appealing to my colleague MPs from North New Georgia, South New Georgia and of Tetepare, Gizho Kolobangara and Marova constituency to assist in, in one way or the other with a new outpatient at Helena Goldie Hospital. This is a hospital that provides health services to hundreds of our people from this con not only this constituency but throughout Solomon Islands reside in the Western Province. We cannot wait for the government to do everything for us. Sometimes we need to work together to take the responsibility to help our people. This is the kind of approach that we need to embrace and that MPs work, working together through our constituencies for the betterment of our people, not only for the Western Province but all of the Solomon Islands. Foreign Affairs Minister Jeremiah Manele acknowledges the UK for its assistance and support to Solomon Islands over the years. However, he says the UK needs to increase its development assistance through bilateral cooperation. He says in the past, UK's development assistance to Solomon Islands was usually channeled through the European Union under the European Development Fund. However, since the UK left EU, Manila says there is a need for the UK to enhance its bilateral cooperation with Solomon Islands. He therefore calls on the UK to increase its development assistance through bilateral cooperation. Minister Manele further acknowledges the UK for its long-standing relationship with Solomon Islands and for the two countries' shared history and ties. He says despite the geographical distance, both countries share the same ideals and principles of peace, freedom and democracy. Parents are encouraged to bring their children between the ages of 1 to 5 for regular health checks and immunization checks. This week marks World Immunization Week and the Ministry of Health through Honiara City Council is highlighting the importance of immunization at the White River Clinic. WHO report, me uh, looking this year, that you still got him, uh, Pockets of outbreaks, low measles cases, low neighboring countries play with me. Um, Fiji, Australia, immigrant cases were reported, and also low other regional countries. And with this SPG, we look forward for biome take place. You may need for a strong immune system, not beginning. So for this year, the message is the big catch up, where me fala look forward for doing the big catch up by him. Him by happen to this year. Sometimes, Lord June, 
July August pay mi kare wan fala big catch up lol pikininis. Um, so me me excited that this week all other clinics okay to try for add uh, awareness lo this fala important so benefits lo this la vaccine that help protect him you me or help boost him immune system blo you me as well immune protect him community blo you me too for immune no garem severe forms lo preventable diseases where him say prevented normal by taking vaccines Youths want to know where they fit in the country, says TSI Chief Executive Officer Ruth Lilongula. Recently, Transparency Solomon Islands hosted a five days workshop on youth and democracy for more than 20 youths from vast backgrounds in various communities. It amazes me just the level of intelligence, the level of responsibility, respect and accountability that these young people have. I think mainly every, almost the majority of programs addressing youth, I'm addressing now, or the vulnerability part below, uh, below or the young people. Yeah? I may be wrong, but that's what I'm looking. So like, you know, marijuana, um, sexual transmitted diseases, and all of these things, yeah? But their potential, to contribute meaningfully to their communities, their families, that has not been uh, brought out. So I think more and more program should be targeting now look at the potential that young people in this country have to contribute to the healthy development of our country. Seven out of ten Solomon Islanders under the age of 30, a huge number of the population, are in the informal sector. For the Youth and Democracy Workshop, TSI says they received more than 200 applications from youths wanting to be a part of this workshop and wanting to learn more about the issues affecting their lives. Stark, uh, things happen in the village and the homes. We are created by youth too, yeah? because we are sort of lack of understanding now what now who are out the reply you mean let me run this time also then one important thing me come lane him here now or say son millennium lawyer me got him doubt to him here then time me come attend him then me but i doubt me got him him fee him solve for now listen that whole season me come all about uh CDA fund them, and they fund them, blow government no more. And what me learn them, blow him now. Also, this will have slain where CDA come, blow him, him no more. Tax where what go collect him, him go back inside, blow uh, basket, blow government, then back government, him, then him give him back, blow him people. So then, over something me learn them more, constitution law. Yeah, so from low, yeah. then you meet everyone got them as a right. No matter whether you a sick man or what bikini or especially what inside law as a citizen of this country, you meet everyone got them right. Uh, me think that after this far program, me hope for go down back to the community blow me or round look at the youths or them for advocate na, for other things or them where me learn him here yeah. because stuck a lot of uh, communities blame me or not educated and or not understanding what na RCDF or them or the people who have no savvy to hear that sometimes about the complaints and I say or the laws blame me and acts blame me have no straight there about the say but or no savvy when I thought I go start when I forget I go or them and through all this program yeah. but me say help for go out for spread much or the things me learn, me learn advocate for change lo in shallow community. What I appreciate him about him in this program is him bring him out youths from all over the country, ne? from 50 constituencies, and you know? come together, uh, discuss together, share him views, involve a lot of impromptu speeches, debate, which is him good and if I building new relationships, finding out new friends, and kind of so. 
Education Minister Lanel Tanangada says the scholarship award list for government-sponsored students is already distributed via the education website portal. Opposition leader Matthew Wale in Parliament questioned why there was a delay in the scholarship recipient list for 2023. He also questioned what the government is doing to address the effects that delay will have on the students and also questioned what steps are taken to ensure this does not happen again in 2024. The scholarships uh, recipient listing of successful candidates was posted online on the portal on February 8th. 2023 and successful candidates were notified and those with programs that commencing in semester 1 2023 have commenced study while those with programs to commence in semester 2 2023 would commence in semester 2 2023. The perpetrated delay in the completion of the 2023 scholarship processes was due to administration of the award letters including late submissions by successful candidates to submit the required documents to cite TESA NSD before an award letter was issued. Um, this includes admission letter from the universities where students had applied to do their studies, medical examination reports, and police uh, clearance. Um, the second part of the question requires me to inform the Honorable House. The 2024 scholarship opportunity list for education training plan um, is being devised and will be advertised commencing in May this year, 2023. The period of, for scholarship applications to be received by CITESA and NSD for the 2024 scholarships will be from mid-May to 31st of July 2023, and then CITESA NSD plans to release the 2024 award list, awardee list by December 2023. And the third part of the question requires me to respond to the following question. For assurance, inform the House on whether steps are being taken to ensure that this problem does not occur next year. Mr. Speaker, sir, the consultation for the 2024 cycle of scholarships has commenced and the education training plan will be published in the months which I have indicated, mid-May to 31st July 2023. This is to allow for applicants to make timely and quality submissions of applications and a control and quality assurance committee will be established to ensure that the scholarship processes meet the targeted dates as well as to ensure accountability on the part of the staff who assesses the applications and select the successful candidates based on the selection criteria used. Today, a dawn service was held in Honiara to mark Anzac Day. <laughs> Observed on 25 April each year, Anzac Day was originated to honour the members of the Australian and New Zealand Army who served in the Gallipoli campaign, the first engagement in the First World War. At the Cenotaph area at the Central Police Station, Prime Minister Manasi Songavare was among guests commemorating this year's Anzac Day service of remembrance. The guests included His Excellency the Governor-General Sir David Runagi and representatives of diplomatic posts in the country. Australian High Commissioner Rod Hilton said Anzac Day has been one of the most important dates on Australia's calendar since 1916. He said it is an occasion for them to honour all who have won and still wear their country's uniform in service. He acknowledged the more than the 20 Australian and New Zealand Defence Force members deployed to Solomon Islands working with the Australian Federal Police and the Republic of Fiji Military Forces as part of the Solomon's International Assistance Force, CF. Hilton said since November 2021, CF has worked side by side with the Royal Solomon Islands Police Force, a partnership founded on the country's enduring history, shared values and deep friendships as Pacific family. Anzac Day is a time of personal reflection, an opportunity to remember the loyalty, selflessness and courage of the original Anzacs. Senior Australian Defence Force representative Air Commodore David Holmes reflected on the impact of World War II on Solomon Islands and the crucial support Australia received from the Solomon Scouts. 85 serving members of the Australian Defence Force have died in Solomon Islands. 84 of them were sailors who died when the HMAS Canberra sank during the Battle of Gorokanal in 1942. 
The 85th was Private Jamie Clark, a young soldier who died on Mount Austin during a routine patrol while serving as part of Ramsey. Other guests to the Anzac Day Remembrance Service includes other government ministers, that includes the Deputy Prime Minister, Manasseh Mailanga, and other ministers, Chief Justice Sir Albert Palmer, Speaker of the National Parliament, Patterson Oti, and other members of the public. This year marks 105 years since the end of World War One. <laughs> Gina Kekia, Tavuli News. A Solomon Islands representative at the face and beauty pageant in the Philippines says young girls can achieve their goals if they set their mind to it. Miss Carleen, who is part Temotu and based in New Zealand, was a participant at the face and beauty pageant, a charitable event held in the Philippines. Carleen is passionate about being a model and encourages young girls to continue to aspire to achieve their goals. Hello everyone, my name is Carleen and right now I'm just finishing high school. I'm a year 13 and I do part-time work. I have two jobs and I'm just doing a little bit of modeling and in my spare time I just like to paint and do art and yeah, stuff like that. Um, the name of the pageant that I went to was Face of Beauty International and it was a charity pageant. We raised money for a school in the Philippines called Kamaligan High School um, just to set up like a new classroom for them to like have computers, books, just stuff they needed to learn. So yeah, that was pretty cool to be a part of. Um, when I went there, there was not that many people that um, knew about the Solomon Islands. So. I made sure to like tell everyone about it and like how there's so many different islands there and they all have their own like cultures and languages and yeah that was that was pretty cool to let other people know about my country so and I just wanted to say thank you to the Solomon Island community in New Zealand as well as the people back home for supporting me along the way and encouraging me to do my best also want to thank my family um, for also supporting me and yeah I really appreciate all of the support and I'm very proud to have represented my country on an international scale. Um, I'd say just if you want to be a part of something like this just go for it. Um, you don't need that much experience. This was like my second pageant. I didn't know what I was doing but I just went for it and tried my best and yeah that's all that matters. That's Carleen being interviewed by PMN Solomon Islands in New Zealand. And finally now in local news, heading to the airport anytime soon. The bumpy ride will soon be over as tar ceiling of the road from Henderson progresses into the night. Work along this stretch of the road in the Kukum Highway project is anticipated to be complete a month before the Games. The stretch of road from Henderson to King George has been a nightmare for travellers to and from the airport and the travelling public at large. Now with the tar ceiling of the road and addition of streetlights, the Henderson Road is a different seen especially at night. The 6.6 kilometre road project is funded by the government of Japan at around $322 million. The project component will include four lane roads to Lunga Bridge and a two kilometre two lane road from Lunga Bridge to the airport. The street lights are the first of its kind along this stretch of road. And that's local news. Do stay with us. Coming up next is sports. Welcome back in Tavoli Sports. Anti-doping is a new topic of discussion, especially for coaches under scholarship and interested athletes. The Solomon Islands National Institute of Sports Anti-Doping Teamwork Session, which took place today, is in collaboration with the Oceania Regional Anti-Doping Organization. I believe session today I'm very exposing those attendees, if I got them a total of 50 participants today inside the conference room. 
And basically we talk about what now anti-doping. We will just briefly him to follow come for briefly him. what is anti-doping, what now some fella rights and responsibilities blah athletes inside the doping control process. And we will look to law some fella exemptions for use I use drugs in case of a medical or same you under medical but you have to use him drug then by exempted on a basis apply and not things the same so this one will look him very helpful as in you may approaching towards the games you may try for our RM athletes for not doing drugs and any other things where I'm related to being disqualified low games after if you have tested positive uh, after all, anti-doping is all about just one big com campaign against him doping, against him drug use. And for me, everyone, for me, play clean, play true, play fair. Everyone must play awesome. Sailing is amongst other sports in preparations for the Games in November. Team Sailing remains optimistic with every training session. Preparation this time but are going well. Me first start started training last year. Then go go kasim this time. Me finally got a boat, so I'm very nice now. So me first got a three three four days now for doing my technical training there. I'm now Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. Then two days gym law sinis. First time me first got a twenty four athletes. Me first register for doing that training yeah, but then. Other athletes not turn up, some of them not turn up because of their current family commitment, some of them work, some of them reduce him come for 13 now. Why me for reduce him? Because me for need him now attendance to the commitment to the lot training because you say no matter you train for compete, they compete for game. Sailing is amongst other sports that are also facing challenges. Sometimes other, I mean, me for current good number of athletes that should come no matter, but then some of them just no feel motivated for come because boats blow me fala six fala then only for fala no ma him good em car em full set for me if i use him okay uh actually 10 but other boats i am him no him no good so most athletes are come here but if i have to shift to some naran go out then naran come in naran go out or some no some fun is a 10 up no man uh training venue yeah Place also because sailing, if I need him now, open space where I need him now, wind, strong wind blow them. But there, look at the sea, him, him just smooth, no man, any strong wind there. Then, most deep uh, disturbance there, or the wreck ship, my, any kind, something rust, uh, broken ship where she stay low sides here. Yeah, him now, also, at least no free for doing good sailing, what got a fear, but something kasem leg blota and osem then i've been challenging to lo dream training at chat because me for hard for you know proper training time me for no garem na a rescue boat osem the me for just ota group responsible for give me for rescue boat but no some game come back feedback yet but me for try my best for dream go out sailing Today, the national netball squad is back in the country after a week-long trial in Gold Coast. A seven-day program at the Gold Coast had the opportunity of receiving mental coaching from the Australian coaches along with participating in some high-level trial games against semi-professional franchise teams and other Pacific national teams. 16 girls, two coaches and team manager travelled last week. They were involved in four games, I believe. The first one was against Fiji national team, second one was against PNG and then they also played a local club last night. And from the take, uh, the, the whole purpose of going was for experience and exposure. Uh, we've. Uh, my boss Aaron has uh, communicated with Gold Coast coach mentors to arrange friendly matches and this match is to make make sure that um, the athletes and the coaches know where they're at and you know they've been training for since last year so this is more to more so to 
teach the players to learn more about their game and how they play together and also for the coaches to view where their players are at and where they need to improve on so I think um, to play it's it's always good to play um, teams that are better that way it can help stretch your game and you learn a lot more about yourself about your game about your team um, so I'm proud of the team uh, tomorrow we're having a session here with feedback They've brought film and also stats of each of the games. And that's Sports Today, which also wraps up our bulletin for now. More of our stories can be revisited on our social media platforms. That's on Twitter and on Facebook. I'm Lisa. Thanks for watching.